Okay, um, so just a little bit, um, yeah, so, so two of the teachers, you know, I, I was very influenced by a couple of teachers. Uh, one was Muji, his, uh, you could say his lineage is from Ramana Maharishi, which is enlightenment or, or non-duality. And uh, another teacher is Dr. David R. Hawkins, and he's, uh, he's, you know, I mean, he's also a teacher of enlightenment, and I met both of them. And um, so what was really, really great uh, to find out with that was that, uh, is what is the ego? What is the ego? And how does that, how does the ego stop one from being, uh, from realizing one's, uh, realizing one's, uh, uh, you could say, the self or the enlightened self or the, or the self with the capital S or one's, who one should be, if you like, uh, going without, without the baggage of the ego. And what is the ego? And just very, very quickly, with my background is, um, I come from addictions background, uh, my major, uh, very quickly, my major addiction was food addiction, but uh, later on I went into the stock market, I went into heavy workalism and also uh, other addictions as well. So, and that led to um, kidney failure and suddenly facing near death and having a spiritual experience uh, in the hospital bed. Heavenly time, the spiritual experience, where I heard a voice say, find a spiritual solution. And, you know, I was led to Dr. Dr. David R. Hawkins through mystical, miraculous occurrences. Uh, someone gave me a DVD of, of, of Dr. Hawkins. I later found out uh, he was one of the sponsees of a man named Bill Wilson, who was one of the founders of the 12-step groups. Um, and so I then, apart from, you know, he's, he said, you know, the 12 steps are really, really good for getting rid of addictions. Uh, you have uh, programs like Alcoholics Anonymous or Cocaine Anonymous or Overreachers Anonymous. Uh, there's also ones for relationships, Al-Anon, CODA, uh, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, so for various things. So that will get rid of I did. I have gone to those fellowships and around the food I'm 10 years abstinent. So they really are really, really good for uh, releasing any, any form of addiction and they they give the, 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 f the first basis for a, a preliminary understanding of releasing um, some of the major blocks within the ego. So the ego, what is the ego? The ego, in my, in my view, is um, all one's repressed, uh, repressed emotions. That creates a more inflated ego, plus all of the belief systems that are held within the ego. So, you know, these, um, so there can be uh, resentments or, or fears, uh, repressed guilt, repressed shame, all these various uh, emotions. And uh, they, they pull you, the more you have these repressed emotions, how, how do these repressed emotions build up? Well, certain things in life um, lead to repression of feelings. So there can be major things like food addiction, I, you know, I was into oh, I, was all, I did all kinds of food addiction. I had the sweet sugar addiction plus the binging on junk food, but uh, it could equally manifest with alcohol, cocaine, drugs of any type, even binge watching TV, um, relationships, codependency, love addiction, or sex addiction. All of those, con you know, these are constant behaviors of the ego to not experience the now not experience and so if you're especially if you're an addict or even normal people who are repressing feelings all these feelings are not processed through so they create a huge ego inflation and they tune you in to these lower inflated vibrations so when you get down like when I was uh, you know more or less just about to face death with uh, several addictions going at the same time so one you know I'm full of fear full of anger, explosive anger, extreme workalism, on, a, on adrenaline, uh, also, you know, huge uh, relationship problems as well. So all of that, so that inflated energy can lead to outbursts of anger or needing to repress one's feelings through some addictive behavior. 
but that led, you know, that eventually leads to, uh, you know, in my case, led to uh, kidney failure and, and facing death in a hospital bed, and then I had the spiritual experience. So the spiritual experience, to get those uh, sublime spiritual experiences and to experience, you know, in those rare moments when the ego is taken out of the picture and you can experience the self, uh, it's sublime. You know, the, the experiences of, of peace, serenity, oneness, love, are, and that's what's waiting if you can let go of the ego. But it, it is, depending on how much spiritual work, um, uh, you know, it depends on where you'll be at. Now, in terms of, um, so, you know, going to a 12-step group if there's, if there's addictions is really, really good. But, you know, it's not really, even if you haven't got the addiction, um, in the uh, trusted groups, you see, they treat the underlying cause, you know. And what happens is, you know, if you've been in addiction, you've got a lot of uh, repressed emotions, and they'd have something in the 12 steps called a spiritual inventory. Spiritual inventory is where you can go through all your resentments you've had in, in life, all your fears, everything and share that inventory with another person who's gone through and recovered from addiction. And therefore you start to be in connection with uh, all the resentment, the anger, the fear, the frustration from childhood, from uh, everyday life, from work, fear, fears with work, and, you know, fear of the future, anger around family members, anger around maybe not living up to one's potential, uh, there can be uh, anger about or, or grief around the lost years that have been, have been lost to uh, addiction or dysfunction or, or whatever, or even health challenges. So all of that is processed through and that releases, um, that releases the underpinnings of uh, all kinds of behaviours. And um, so as I've said, you know, around the food, I'm ten, 10 years abstinent, I've been totally free. But it's, it's in those 12-step fellowships, a bit of an advert for 12-step fellowships, but anyway, you know, they do get rid of all that anger that's repressed within the ego, all the fear. You, you do prayers, if you're angry at someone, you can pray until those resentments are released. So they're very, very valuable. And what happens is, if you're... Um, if you have all these, if you haven't dealt and released spiritually all of these fears, resentments, shame, guilt, that sort of, you know, that these addictions sort of so much, you know, it's like um, there is, essentially when you have an inflated ego, it's really uh, inviting in death, you see, it's anti-life. You know, the, more, the more inflated an ego is, because in my case I had addictions, which means I'm trying to commit suicide slowly or quickly through my addictions. That's what the, it's like that guilt and shame that's not been processed through. It, you know, what does guilt mean? What does unprocessed guilt and shame mean? I deserve punishment. That's the spiritual message, you see, I deserve punishment. So I'll pick up an addiction, or if I'm, if I'm a food addict, I'll pick up food to kill myself. If I'm a workaholic, I'll choose a job where I can kill myself. Like the stock market's a good job to kill yourself in with extreme workalism and addictive uh, surroundings um, and very competitive or you know or if I'm a relationship addict then I'll choose bad relationship after bad relationship because you know that disconnection from the source and all that sh all that unprocessed shame and guilt means that unconsciously I'll choose people that reflect that you see because I, I deserve death and punishment and, and if I had a relationship I deserve someone who treats me badly or is in addiction or is a nutcase or something. So I'll find that attractive. So also in terms of one's potentiality, um, you know, one can't fulfill one's spiritual potential. It depends on how much spiritual work one has done to release that stuff. Then one is more in tune with the heart, with the spirit. And also those blocks... Um, and those fears are, are released. So one is aligned, one has the intuition to, um, to go through things. And it's quite... Now the E, I mean, the, I mean you can, we can go in probably... Uh, maybe later on we can go more into depth into the ego. The ego can have, uh, you know, belief systems, sub-personalities, archetypes. 
all of these patterns, but they can, you know, they can lead to, you know, explosive behaviour, or certain situations come in to be resolved, uh, that can be resolved through spiritual work. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's what I'd say. I mean, the other thing, after, after that, um, you know, Dr. Hawkins, we were talking about Dr. Hawkins, of course, the miracles which we do here in the group, there's, um, those are 365 lessons, there's an app you can get free if you've got uh, the iPhone, otherwise I think it's about four pounds on Android. There are 365 lessons to release the ego and, uh, uh, and let go of all thoughts to realise um, the... Uh, so, what is enlightenment? Um, it, was, it was an interesting thing about not wanting to let go, but the enlightened place actually is the place uh, uh, is it's what's called the non-dual place. It's the place where the where the illusion of a separated self that is trying to run life and trying to and thinks it's in control dissolves, and one experiences the states of oneness. You see, and then uh, in those in those states, there is no there is no individual that's fighting fighting the world. So these are these are things. But as you do spiritual work, that that illusion starts to disappear. And in fact, the Course in Miracles talks about, you know, the world being an illusion, it's a perception projected out of out of the ego. But we'll go into that late, later on. And if you're familiar with Ramana, Ramana, or Dr. Hawkins' teachings, um, you know, we'll we'll get to that. In terms of, um, so another thing that we do here in the group is uh, cancelling of beliefs and um, like if someone's you know if, if there's fears uh, in work uh, or around uh, or if you're self-employed and you're going to um, go for work and there's fears about you're not going to be good enough or whatever those those things can be there is a, a thing which I got from Dr. Hawkins which is cancelling of beliefs which will be hopefully doing very very soon so any belief system, now I think a lot of people here are uh, quite advanced spiritually. So, so when you experience high spiritual states, mm -hmm. then you're experiencing infinite presence or limitless presence or timeless presence. You know, there is the experience of presence without ego. So. Can I get some nods if anyone knows what I mean? Like there is, you know, there's no awareness of body, there's no awareness of thoughts, there's no awareness of time. There's just an infinite, timeless presence in the now. I'm sure everyone's experience might have forgotten it because you're in your head or something, but <laughs> uh, or in your body. So, so the cancelling of beliefs is so if that's the true state. You know, probably babies aren't aware of their body, aren't in their heads yet, so they're just in the infinite timeless now, you see, in the infinite presence. So, so the, the, the thing to let go of beliefs, like um, if there's things that create anger, you know, like uh, coffee shops overcharging with coffee or something like that, <laughs> that create anger, like, you know, then you, you, just, you just use this, this system. <laughs> Nobody knows what you're talking about. Heck, <laughs> no, no, I'm sure people don't go to coffee shops and get angry when they get overcharged. But um, it's like, so this is the thing, and, and, and okay, I didn't go into this, but using this, this thing, uh, Dr. Hawkins had 23 illnesses, many of them life-threatening. And through doing, you know, he, he teaches it in his works and his books and everything, but he let go of all 23 illnesses. He was also, he also had, a, there was also addictions as well. Uh, but um, 23 illnesses, I had three major illnesses, they're all gone. Kidney failure, gout, asthma. So this is how, and this can be done with uh, anger, coffee shops overcharging. It can be done with um, fears around uh, charging clients. It can be done with fears of uh, being able to find a, a new job or being able to communicate. Whatever it is, there'll be belief systems. And how do you find out the belief systems that are in mind? Or also around family as well, you know, um, if, you, if you're angry, you know, there can be beliefs. Uh, and you just got to find out how you're, what, what are the thoughts coming up in mind, you can cancel them. 
Now, uh, so I cancel my belief, let's say I cancel my belief in coffee shops overcharging. Yeah, I cancel my belief that coffee shops overcharge. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. So you cancel, when you cancel a belief, you refute it, you let go, you're no longer going to buy or entertain. You're like, if, you're, if all the belief systems were like the software which the ego is running, which are consciously or unconsciously running your life, if you cancel it and you keep cancelling on a daily basis, you, you delete that belief system. And then you state the truth. For anyone who's had a spiritual experience, I'm an infinite being. Now, anyone who's aware of muscle testing, we've got someone here who can actually do muscle testing. Uh, people are aware of muscle testing kinesiology? No. Yeah. So, no? It's, it's, it's a bit of a, a thing. But it, there, there's a kind of a spiritual way of checking whether something's true spiritually or not, using the muscles in the body. So, if you, if you say the truth is I'm an infinite being, that will come out as a true statement. My, the truth of my essence is I'm an infinite being. And then, when you, and then it, you know, is the truth of what I am a, lim, a limited thought that would come out as false. So, you just sort of say, like I did, I cancel my belief in kidney failure, I'm an infinite being, subject to what I hold in mind. In a few years, my kidney failure disappeared. Because the truth is, I'm an infinite being. I'm not, I'm not subject to the li limits that I pick up from the collective consciousness in humanity. You know, all kinds of, there's not enough money, uh, you know, people are looking to overcharge me, companies are looking to overdo it, family members are not good. So you can, you can let that. So that's, the, that's the, uh, the belief that, you know, that's the thing that we do. And we're doing various other Course in Miracle lessons here today. Okay. So I'll put this off.